I am I'm with presentation of Peru Hub. Uh, Peru Hub is uh, the objective of the project is to establish a hub in the uh, that utilizes research results to generate agriculture, economic and social development in rural communities uh, in the Amazon, promoting sustainable use of natural resources, incorporating women in natural in native entrepreneurs to value chains. Um, the purpose is to turn uh, a, a university, the agrarian university site in Tarapoto, which is called from now on IRD Pucayacu, into a center to generate and transfer technology, develop sustainable agriculture production models uh, to improve existing models, uh, models for new crops, profitable tropical production, uh, establish a man, uh, and manage an irrigation model, and establish a center for monitoring climate and soils. Uh, and also to develop a plan for transformation of agriculture products, so then can we add, add value to the products in the Amazon and promote entrepreneurships. Uh, that's where it's located. When we talk about San Martin, Peru is divided into well, now they call regions. Some states still call them departments, and that's where San Martin is. San Martin is in the, the sort of uh, slopes of the Amazon. So, um, it's it's part mountain and part the land uh, plain Amazon, and those are the sites where we are w w working in San Martin. If if you see this little red dot, it's where Pucayac is located, and those are the sites where we are working with farmers. Um, the project is ex executed by the Agrarian University, it's UNALM, which is Universidad Nacional Agraria La Molina. But uh, we have uh, some different partners. We work with the University of Oklahoma in soil and climate diagnose. Um, we work with Purdue in food transformation, land use, and all the things related to knowledge building. With Utah State University, in we have an entrepreneurship program. And with the alliance of the CGIR, uh, Biodiversity International and SEAD, we have worked with agroforestry and mixed forage and ranch system. Agro we are going to establish an agrometeorology network and also with the entrepreneurship program. Uh, the, main, uh, the main crops there are cocoa, with about 100. And that, that's probably the most econ uh, the first economy there in agriculture. More, uh, uh, the the 100,000 hectares, 600 60, hectares are in production. Production uh, data are very, very uh, scattered, and, but it's, it's estimated as between 600 and 900 kilograms per hectare. Um, now, talking about cocoa, uh, it's uh, uh, only 60,000 60, hectares in production because since it was not profitable, uh, the pro uh, some of producers have abandoned it or are not uh, producing it, but with the prices now, probably they will go more into production. Pest and diseases are a problem. Uh, monilia, a fungi, and, uh, and a worm that uh, attacks the, uh, the fruit is a problem. So that brings low profitability. There are lots of artisanal enterprises which elaborate chocolate, uh, but then the diversity of cocoa in, in, in the organic cocoa is not differentiated. Rice is an important crop there, 130, 103,000 hectares. It's paddy rice in fertile soils. There's good technology and there is a market for that, so we are not going to get into rice. Pastures, 113,000 hectares. There are pastures that are rain fed, 95%. Improved uh, pastures, uh, some of them. Um, 250,000 cattle with different degrees of crossing, uh, uh, about with, uh, for example, with Holstein and, and gear. And uh, the production is about five liters of milk per day. And maize and herd palm or palmito palm is local in localized areas. Those are the main crops. Um, What's the problem there that farmers shifted from subsistence or uh, illegal, illegal crop to commercial agriculture and improved roads and services are available, but technical production 
uh, cost, uh, te te technical assistance cost product, uh, costs are, are, are high and access to markets uh, are difficult uh, and solutions have really been scarce to them, offered to them. Uh, so farmers and institutions are seeking for new alternatives to diversify their production, but so far few have been available. Uh, to add that, the uh, familiar and hand labor has diminished. Young people are moving to cities and it's now a limiting factor. Uh, so the strategy that the project is considering is the replicability. So we have to put, have accessible technology so that farmers can copy it, but then the farm size, we are facing small or very small farm, farmers with three hectares or less and the livestock with uh, 30 hectares for their, uh, for their, for their animals. The, the market is almost absent for new crops that we, we that, uh, should be used in for export crops. And uh, another factor is the time, the, the the project is going to end on 2026, so we have to get results in short term to get sustainability to the project so that we could achieve that could uh, results could be reached in five at the midterm or more than five years. And we have to look at the sustainability of uh, IRD Pukayaku for uh, and for farmers. How we plan to, uh, or the project is facing the sustainability project, is to use crops with uh, locally added, added value, focusing the market and promoting the participation of farmers with management capacity. Uh, then the IRD will not only generate and transfer technology, but will, will also be a model and a motivator of success based on business. And also since the uh, IRD Pucayaco has 200 hectares, the income generated by the IRD activities and what generates the I, uh, 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 Bukayaku and to have personal train uh, will allow the continuity to solve the technical problems that may arise in the future. Um, in the short term, we are we are thinking or we things have are being promoted. The first crop is new to the area, is passion fruit. But then we are going to work with the dairy farming. It's an important activity, improving their, their overall production of milk, which is um, uh, the, the first product. But uh, farmers transform the milk into cheese. Cheese have to be improved. They, they have a, a little shelf life. So we have to produce better cheeses and that lasts for longer. Uh, in the midterm, we, we are working with fine uh, uh, a cacao cacao, because cacao is not differentiated, uh, but since the Peru is an area of diversity of cacao, fine and aromatic cacaos are available there, but they are not differentiated. We're working with farmers to try to differentiate that for in, in the future. Sour soap is another alternative, not for fruit, but for juice to, to export. So new varieties of, uh, of, of uh, sour soap with bigger fruits are, are being introduced. In the pasture recovery, to improve the, the feed for animals is also a, a, a strategy for the short, for the midterm. And for the long term, camu camu, which is a, a berry that is produced in the Amazon and has high content of vitamin C and has a market and has, has a potential export market is going to, is being promoted. Vanilla, and vanilla, there, is, there are local vanillas, but they are not uh, uh, considered to be food. So, Vanillas are being introduced from Mexico and will be introduced from the Indian Ocean and cinnamon. Uh, in Pucayacu, that, that's, the, that's the plan of the, the, the site. Uh, we are, uh, we, are uh, we have established a, an irrigation system, which is a model that should be copied. This, so we driven with solar energy and it irrigates 28, 28 hectares of crops. Then added to that, that, that's with a yellow line. If you see, we have a, oops, where is the cursor here? Well, anyway, uh, here is it. We have, a, this is the reservoir. We are picking up water from the river and that's being used to irrigate 28 hectares over here. And then we are going to develop a second phase. It's a hybrid system. We are going to use electricity 
But since electricity prices are lower in the night, so we are going to use electricity to pump water into new reservoirs here and here and here to irrigate pastures. So that will give us minimal op operative costs and should be replied with farmers. Uh, we have a nursery which uh, has uh, 1.75 square, uh, 1,750 square meters, has its own watering system and is produced to produce different plants. We have a place of quarantine that is used now for vanilla, but could be used for something else. And that we, we have established that already. Uh, what advances we have in Pucayacu, we have seven hectares of passion fruit that is starting production. We have established four hectares of sour soap, sour soap, four hectares of fine cocoa, and then the professors in the university are characterizing cocoa to define quality standards. And we have introduced a new technology, which is bagging the cocoa, the cocoa, to uh, to help it to avoid. Uh, in, in, so far, has been accepted by farmers to help uh, to provide uh, to help it to avoid the disease, which is the monilia fungi and uh, in the pest. The, the, the worm that attacks the, the fruit. Um, then we, in, in, cattle, in cattle raising, we have uh, uh, we have given them support because the project does not, does not allow to make any buildings, but the university has improved their barn and their parlor. We have established 2.5 hectares of pastoral forestry systems, 20 hectares of irrigation, we are going to establish that to recover grasslands. And we are establishing a, a system of fodder production with cutting forage systems for small livestock producers that, that that's going also to be used with small, it's used already and it's being transferred to small uh, uh, cattle producers. Um, in extension, we have this uh, technology, which is called field schools, which is called Escuelas de Campos in, in Spanish, in Coco. A palmito palm or hair palm, orange and livestock with 15 farmer organizations that has, we have provided 960 technical assistant visit to beneficiaries. 180 leaders have been trained. We have identified farmers with better management capacities. Um, we have established livestock uh, for, we, uh, in, with uh, in, uh, pl uh, plots for livestock with irrigation and cutting for for livestock, we have identified passion fruit farmers to start to promote this, that crop, and we have established a program of experience exchange activities with farmers and livestock producers. Farmers with uh, successful farmers or farmers from uh, San Martin has have been taken to visit farmers other, in other places of Peru which are, have been successful with producing milk and cheese. Uh, we have a, in transformation, a, 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 in just in a couple of weeks ago, we have inaugurated a food processing plant that has a line to produce fruit juice and fruit and pulp juice with enough capacity to produce 20, ton, ton, 20 tons of juice per week. The building was done by the UNAM, but the equipment was uh, in the advice have been provided by Peru Hub. Here is the university, the Agrarian University, Purdue University. Uh, and we are doing research in new products, regional cheese with better shell life, as, as I told you before, and something innovative we are producing, some research in producing uh, gums, fruit gums with Amazonian fruits. Uh, in uh, entrepreneurship, we, the project has strengthened the entrepreneurship program, which is called in, in, in the UNAM, which is uh, called Incubagoraria. So there are two specialists working with them. We have consolidated 20, 38 entrepreneurship up to date. So what's mean consolidation is mean we are trying not, not, not only to, to improve their production, but also to all, all the legal activities to have the register, the, the health register and all that. The, so that they, 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 they train them to uh, to get uh, loans from banks or from the farm from the uh, from the financing system. There is going to be a road show uh, that is going to be the, uh, at the end of uh, this year with uh, with the help of biodiversity CN with 25, 20 identified enterprise to connect them with financing system enterprises. 
And then uh, there is a competitive fund by the Peruvian government called Pru Innovative. So we have uh, advised and to help the, the two, two, inter, two, two groups, Tres Jotas, which is a cheese and milk enterprise in the University of San Martin uh, by Innova Incubator to, to get to win two competitive contests, two competitive funds. Uh, we are doing workshops uh, and training to entrepreneur to to strengthen the, the, their entrepreneur abilities. Uh, we have helped in women. Forty six percent of total participants in our in our activities are women, and we have a future participation in. There is going to be a big fair, big fair in September here in Lima, Experimentaria, and Peru Hub is going to have a site there to participate to bring all the little enterprises to pro, uh, to participate there. Uh, in agroclimate, we have an agroclimate and soil monitoring network that has been established with Oklahoma University. Uh, and uh, we have so far established five, uh, we have to establish uh, five uh, agro, agro uh, uh, weather, uh, uh, weather uh, stations, uh, in, in, in different sites in San Martin. So far, we have we have established three. Two could not be established because there was not the they were not secure places. So we have been left for 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 the future. But we have established three uh, weather and soil monitoring monitoring stations in the three places in San Martin, and uh, we have uh, we have to establish a, a technique. Uh, uh, Technical network, uh, which we provide inter integrated uh, and participative services in weather, with the support of also Oklahoma and the Seed Biodiversity Alliance. In addition to that, with uh, with the University of Oklahoma, uh, um, we are measuring the uh, soil fertility with a kit uh, that that the university has developed, which is a Pacha kit that you have an equipment, you go to the field, to the farmer, and you can measure all the, <clears throat> the physical and chemical characteristics of soils. Uh, I don't know if I have run too much, but <laughs> that's the presentation of Peru Hub. Thank you very much. So Juan, I'm gonna uh, now start the second part of the talk and I'll talk more about the soil health and the weather stations now. Yes. Um, so I think I have to open up. Yeah, my... so you, have, you have a bit more of time, so <laughs> you have more time. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. We have one hour in total, so I'm I'm gonna start. Okay. I'm, I'm gonna start my session now, um, and I'll talk about the soil health and uh, and the weather stations. Um, let's. I gotta go to share screen and desktop. Uh, can you see? Can you see my talk? Yes. Juan? Yes. yes. Ah, okay. <clears throat> okay. Um, thank you, everybody. I'm I'm the second half of this presentation, um, and as you were introduced, um, there is a a sort of a meteorological and soil team supporting uh, the agricultural services and commercial services that the Peru Hub program is providing to regional farmers. I'm from the University of Oklahoma, and I'm gonna talk to you a bit about that technical program that we've created. I'm part of a larger team in the US uh, at University of Oklahoma and Purdue University that is helping to create sort of an, that integrated platform between soil, cultivars, and climate to help with decision support systems. And it includes soil scientists, it includes social scientists, it includes meteorologists, and uh, GIS specialists, and data visualization specialists. And what we do is we provide that technical underpinning for the uh, decision-making tools that programs like SEAT are going to be using to help farmers make good choices. So our goal 
at the University of Oklahoma in the soil meteorological team is to implement a meteorological network that provides real-time data to farmers and um, extensionists to provide a soil health knowledge network to local farmer communities uh, to help with the business opportunities that relate to soil health, but also potentially creating uh, jobs where soil health assessment services could be their own business opportunity and to establish a soil monitoring program, which includes uh, soil chemistry and soil moisture um, centered at the IRDs or the field stations that Peru Hub is establishing to show farmers when irrigation or fertigation can be done based on local meteorological conditions. And this is all part of an information flow system, right? That involves extensionists doing communicate community engagement. It involves physical scientists collecting samples and monitoring on the ground, but also using remote sensing, taking that data, adding it into models such as weather models, uh, mapping models, and then that data gets put into different tools that, that we've created or will create to help with decision support. One of those tools is called Soil Explorer, and you can look that up, soilexplorer.net, where we'll be putting our data online uh, for um, uh, government and, and, and really anyone to use. So right now, the region that we're working in, Sad Martin, is supported by a, a meteorological and hydrological network from Sanamhi. Um, there are 46 stations, 17 of which are fully operating. Um, and they've been around and supporting the region for 49 years. Much of the data, though, is manual collection, but it is collected daily. So it's a, it's a lot of uh, physical labor and time taken to collect this data. What we're initiating is a real-time digital network uh, that can provide data to the cloud. And then professors at UNAM, who are experts in agri-climate and agri-meteorology, will use that data to help with decision support and real-time weather for local farmers. We've, we are establishing five new weather stations through the region. Um, the main activities, as you were told, is at the IRD Pukiyaku, which is going to be the central hub for work. But there's four other stations that we are working at. Three have been established, and there's two more, as you were told, um, that, that because of um, issues related to site security, we couldn't establish, and we will be finishing that work this summer. The, the systems are meter, uh, or Campbell Scientific, Climate View 50 all-in-one sensors that give you temperature, humidity, pressure, wind speed, solar radiation, rainfall, and lightning. Uh, continuous soil monitoring sensors that give you soil temperature, water content, electrical conductivity, and data loggers. And these systems are highly mobile, which is also very important. What we're doing is not just providing sort of technical equipment. That's, that, that's important, but that's only a small part of it. The training is actually the biggest part of it. How do you make this system sustainable? So we're establishing these soil stations and weather stations through the region and training extensionists and partner uh, um, professors to basically take over the maintenance, the operation, the moving, and the um, data curation. And that is one of the most important things, thinking about the data, how to make sure it's of good quality and how to get that available to people. But we just finished our installation uh, campaign. And this was you know, started about, about three weeks ago, but we, we delivered these things in, in May and we'll be probably be coming back in July or August to finish the, the installation. These weather and soil stations can work in a number of different ways. You can have a central node where you, you circle the central weather station with soil monitoring stations, 
or you can have the soil monitoring stations talk to each other and you have a central weather station and then five kilometers away another soil station and then it gets a signal from another soil station that's five miles or five kilometers away. So you can have a great distance between them as you can add up those five kilometer segments. Right now, we're mostly working with the central node configuration where we have multiple soil stations and sensors clustered around one weather station. Now, the process of getting that information to those people who can use it to create products, weather products, climate products, decision-making tools is complicated, right? Because you have the, the soil sensors, you have the weather stations, they have to be maintained, they have to be observed, you have to collect the data, that data is sent to the cloud, or it could be actually downloaded right from the individual unit itself on, an, on a card, but it's sent to the cloud, ULNAM servers will ultimately download that data from the cloud. Right now, we're, we're doing the downloading at servers at University of Oklahoma, and then we're writing the codes to, to, um, to clean up the data, to check the data for errant uh, data measurements. And then the ULNAM server will do a quality assessment and then deliver the data to professors at UNAM who do meteorology or to SIAT who could put it in, in, in terms of climate services. Another big aspect of what we're doing is trying to get um, uh, soil health measurement technologies to the field by training extensionists to learn how to do simple tests. This is a kit that we make that has 14 simple tests in it that relate to available phosphate, nitrate, oxidizable carbon, pH, electrical conductivity, texture of soil, water infiltration. All these tests in aggregate tell you a lot about how suited or suitable your soil is for a particular crop. And if the practice, agricultural practices you're using are supporting um, good soil health. And so what we do is we produce these kits at our lab in University of Oklahoma. We bring them to the field stations in Pukuyaku, and then we run training sessions about how to use these kits. So we have extensionists who are learning how to use the soil kits. We then go out and we sample the soil and we provide the analysis and provide a soil health rating for the particular soil. Right now we're training on sites that are the, where the five weather stations are, but ultimately the extensionists will be collecting soils from farmers throughout the region. We wanna make sure that language also is not a barrier to actually connecting with farmers and connecting with villages and providing data. So what we do is we, in addition to a written manual that we provide, we also provide YouTube videos. So I, I hope you can hear this. This is a YouTube video that we created for each of the kids. This one is in Quechua. And this is talking about the role of texture in good water infiltration. Each one of the tests has a video like this. So a farmer can, when the extensionist comes, they can be given these videos, they can watch them on their phones and understand how we're trying to engage with them about good agricultural practices. So the Pacha Kit is a quite reliable portable laboratory and it allows measurements of several soil properties that are physical indicators, biological indicators, and chemical indicators of the state of the soil you're working with. One of the good things about it is it also reduces the need for more expensive laboratory tests, which this does not replace very high end analysis, uh, but it gives farmers a very good indication about the soil that they're working on. So currently, you know, local commercial laboratories analyze, you know, a limited set of soil properties, most of the chemical properties, 
Um, but it takes a very long time to get the data and many farmers are not available or not cannot access that. This will bring the laboratory to the farmer. It's user friendly. Um, and we believe that as this is distributed throughout the, the farming communities that we're working with, it'll empower the farmer to understand how their practices influence the health of the soil and how when we're changing the crops, as, as you heard about today, we're trying new cultivars, um, they will ultimately impact how they will impact the soil itself. Our trainings have been both online and in person. So in 2022, we had a number of training sessions that were all online with the extensionists and some local uh, stakeholders. Uh, in 2023, we had a number of in-person trainings in Tarapoto and how to use the information, how to use the tests. And one of the more important aspects of our training is detailed in-person training at the University of Oklahoma. So we had extensive trainings for three Peru hub visiting scholars, uh, Professor Ruby Vega, uh, David Barcenio, and Yuri Aravelo. They were three organizations, UNAM, Peru Hub, and INEA. They came to the United States at University of Oklahoma. They were in my lab for, for over two months doing intensive training on these tests. And now they are, have brought this knowledge back to the Peru Hub team. And they are the ones that are gonna be engaging the farmers in the field. Um, making sure that um, our trainings also reach the widest, most diverse group is important to us. We want to make sure that both women and men and local communities are represented. And so this represents sort of the breakdown of uh, men and women who have come to the tests and, and men um, are more represented in the group and we think we can actually improve the representation of women in our uh, training exercises. And we'll be working on this over this next year. So the soil health kits are part of a network of thinking about soil health and soil fertility. And so the, how we do this is our extensionists will go into the field with equipment that will allow them to take soil cores while there's also installing the soil sensors. We are partnering with INEA uh, to take also certified laboratory samples where they will do detailed chemical analysis at the same time as we use the pacha kits so we can benchmark that. And then that data all will come back to UNAM and they will be able to repackage that data and get it back to the farmer in a way that tells them about the, the health of their soil. So this data is not just being collected for science. That's an important aspect of it. It's being collected though for the farmer. And we have to make sure that we, that as you can see in this flow chart, that the end user is the farmer. We also want to get the greatest um, density of soil measurements we can through the region that we're working. And so we are doing new soil surveys. We send out our scientists into communities, into the fields, and do soil collection exercises. Right now, we're focusing on where we put the weather stations. We want to know everything possible about the soil, where the weather stations and soil stations are going. So when these these stations like in Pukoyaku demonstrate new crops. And if there's a problem, we can say, well, is it because of soil drainage or is it because of soil fertility? We wanna be able to give that data. We're also looking at how do we look at existing data sets that have been collected over decades, pulling that data in to get together with the new data so we have one giant data set. This is also guided though, not just by people on the ground, it's guided by remote sensing. And so we can see here, one of on the very Northern regions of where, where we're working um, in uh, palm plantations, 
that we can use remote sensing to actually look at the age of the plantations themselves. We can develop a time since deforestation using remote sensing, and we can develop how many years, we can assess how many years that soil plot has been in a particular type of crop. This data is then taken to the farmer and the, as we did then consult with the farmer to confirm the data and to provide their input about how long they've been doing a particular type of management. And this is really important, the farmer engagement aspect of it because soil health is basically a toolkit that allows you to look at relative change. And so when we engage with the farmer and we ask them about how they've been managing, we can better understand how change is happening over time. One of the things that we're also doing to go a bit deeper into thinking about the rate of change, good change or, or bad change, is to use that same remote sensing and to, to understand the exact age of the soil management. And you can see here in this slide, it's an analysis of um, remote sensing that goes back to the early 1980s. And we can determine the exact age since deforestation. Now, each one of these Whoa. red dots is one of a, a 300 farmer cooperative um, that we work with we can determine how long that particular plot of land has been since it was deforested from the remote sensing. We can ask the farmer, of course, how long they've been doing a certain management, but then we can also use the remote sensing to confirm about um, how, when it shifted from, from pasture to plantation. That is really important data because it gives us a benchmark of time. If we do the soil analysis on a plot that's been in palm for four years, 10 years, 20 years, 40 years, that incremental age difference will be matched to incremental change in soil health. And maybe we can develop a model, a model of soil health change over time that we could provide to farmers. This is also one of our goals. And you can see here, this is actually going into more detail of looking at the exact age uh, since deforestation. So I'm gonna stop there. Um, and I don't know if we have time for, for questions at all, but that's just a, a, a brief summary of what we're trying to do in the soil and meteorological program of this really comprehensive, amazing Peru Hub program. So thank you for listening.